تبسم 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 أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته جمع مبارك to all of you and all your loved ones on behalf of Masjid Abu Bakr Siddiq the Imams of this Masjid the officials and of course our beloved Muslims I'd like to take this opportunity to sincerely welcome our very special guest Molana Riyad Saluji just to give you a short introduction to Molana Molana Riyad is a besides being a Molana of course a lawyer by profession and he's he has worked in the fields of media activism advocacy political advocacy in Canada he has his grounding in Canada, of course, born in South Africa, but grounding in Canada, but now resident in, in Cape Town. And he's a graduate of Darul Ulum Al Arabiya, Al Islamiya, where he subsequently taught subjects in Fiqh, Comparative Hadith, and Sirah. He is also a student of the great Sheikh Mukhtar Mughrawi, who's resident in the US. And of course, he's Sheikh locally. Is a uh, very able and capable Sheikh, Sheikh Taha Karan. Uh, and of course, he works very, very closely with uh, Sheikh Muad Ali as well. We've met him a number of, uh, on a number of occasions. Also, just to remind you quickly that there will be a one day intensive seminar which will be led by Sheikh uh, Riyadh at the uh, Al Ghazali Sports Center on Sunday starting promptly at 9 o'clock. So those of you that are keen in, in attending this particular intensive workshop or if you know if your wives or the children that are in uh, uh, intending or attending, please on Sunday at 9 o'clock at the Al Ghazali Sports Center and, and the course will be discussing the significance, the beauty of Surah Yusuf. So I think that will be very, very interesting. Without further ado, I'd like to call Sheikh uh, Riyadh to address you. Jazakallah. Bismillah. Al-Ladhi la ilaha al-Siwa Al-Wahid al-Ahad Al-Fard al-Samad Al-Ladhi lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafi al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen wa ala alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin وصحابته الصالحين الغر الميامين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم اكتبنا منهم آمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Before we speak about Islamic civilization and the beauty of our Islamic legacy and the excellence of our Islamic legacy and the spirituality of our Islamic legacy, we need to start at the beginning. And the beginning was when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to create Adam alayhi salam. And Allah azza wa jal tells us of that originating incident in the Quran. And he says, Subhanahu wa Taala, "A'udhu billahi min al-shaytan al-rajim." وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً. Remember that moment, as though Allah Azza wa Jalla is calling me and you to recall, to bring to our minds and our hearts that moment we were not there. But let us ponder about the gravity of that moment when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the angels his most select and most illuminated and most noble of creation. He told them subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will create on earth a khalifa. 
And then, as you know, the angels objected because of what they thought the human being might do. Nevertheless, from the ayah, we find that Allah Ta'ala intended for us, each one of us, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, every not so, uh, every not so young man, every not so young woman, each of us to be his Khalifa. And then Allah Azza wa Jal, in another ayah, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala says, فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُهُ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِي فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ Allah Ta'ala tells the angels, and when I have fashioned him and proportioned him, and when I have blown into him of my spirit, and my spirit here is a creation of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, not obviously a part of Allah Azza wa Jal. But Allah Ta'ala is using my spirit to indicate tashrif, honor, nobility. Just as when he subhanahu wa ta'ala calls the Kaaba his bait, his house. So Allah Ta'ala says, and when I have blown into him of my spirit, then fall all of you, a command, a divine command, then fall all of you prostrate to Adam alayhi salam. What does it mean to be the Khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Well, the one who is making us the vicegerent has certain attributes, has certain names, has certain characteristics. And it is intended that the one who is made the vicegerent mirrors the attributes and names of the one that gives him that authority. For example, if you were to choose a substitute for your legacy, if you were to choose someone to carry on your name, your empire, your business, your values, your ethics, your norms, who would you choose? Who would you select? You would likely select the one that is closest to you in norms, in values, in attitudes, in behavior, in characteristics. And so it is, many of the ulama teach us that the secret and the beauty of being the Khalifa of Allah Azza wa Jal is that the human being manifests at their limited level, at my finite level, at my human level, that I manifest the names and attributes, the most beautiful names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the divine at my finite and at my human level. And that's what it means to be the Khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It means to be a mirror, a mirror image at a human level for sure, at a finite level for sure, but to be a mirror image of the most beautiful names, asma and sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Walking, talking, breathing, moving in stillness, in the family, alone, in society, at the economic level, at the political level. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-alim. And therefore, I must actualize in me ilm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ar-Rahim, the most lovingly merciful. And I must realize within me loving mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-Halim. He forgives, he overlooks, he is the infinitely forbearing. And I must realize in me hilm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-Kareem, the generous, the infinitely generous in his magnanimity, in his largesse. And I am meant to instill in me the attribute of karam. And like that, like that, 
like that takhalluq, like that me bringing into my character, into my khuluq of his asma and of his sifat, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, and only then, and then, and only then will I be in reality, in completeness, in totality, a khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the likes of which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala boasts to the angels and the malaika. When I have those khuluq, when I am endowed, imbued, adorned, graced with those sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the level of my khuluq. The poet says, عَلَيْكَ بِالْرُوحِ فَاسْتَكْمِلْ فَضَائِلَهَا فَأَنْتَ بِالْرُوحِ لَا بِالْجَسَدِ insanu. The poet says, Give preeminent concern to your ruh and perfect its virtues because you are by your ruh, not by your body, human. You are by your ruh, not by your body, truly human. Then Allah Azza wa Jal, after He has created us, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala guides us, commands us, prohibits us, all of which is for our own benefit. Whenever Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says do, it is for my benefit, physical, emotional, psychological, spiritual. When Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says don't do, it is because in that there is harm for me at many levels, physically, materially, emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually. And as I am the Khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and as I am obeying Him, and journeying with my ruh, with my qalb, closer to Him, to actualize more of His beautiful names and attributes. And that's what it means when I get closer to Him. As I get nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I quote unquote know him better. I see him, quote unquote, I know him better. I want him more. I desire him more. I want to be beautiful in whatever way that I can, as he is beautiful, subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of all peace, as salam then how can I be near to him as a mu'min, as a Muslim, and not feel peace, and not give peace to others and to my environment around me? It's impossible. It's impossible if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of salam, that I too am not filled with salam and do, and do not give salam. It is impossible if I am nearer and closer to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us now that as we struggle to get nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we struggle to love him, to long for him, to seek him, to be near to him, he tells us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the ultimate state that we should strive for as Muslims, the ultimate goal that we should work for as Muslims, is the goal, and you know, of Ihsan. Ihsan. What is Ihsan? And he tells us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that Ihsan is an Allah ka'annaka tarahu that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as though you see him. فَإِن لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكُ And if you don't see him, know that he subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you. And Ihsan, therefore, is the end result of me being a Muslim. It's the end result of my deen. It's what I am working for in everything that I do to obey him subhanahu wa ta'ala in what he wants 
and to stay away from what he does not love. The intent of every single hukum, the intent of every single law, ritual or having to do with life transactions in our deen, the intent of every one of them without exception is the state of ihsan. Is the state of ihsan. Ihsan is that I feel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so powerfully with my qalb, with my heart, that it is as though I see him. Now that, my dear brothers and sisters, is not an intellectual concept. It's not an idea in my mind. Ihsan is a feeling of the qalb, is a feeling of the heart. That as though I see him, I have certain feelings. Now we can, we can approximate this al-a'la, by thinking about someone that you know who you love very much, who you respect very much, who you revere very much, an older person of ilm, of goodness, of taqwa, of birr, of ihsan. Some of you, all of us, have someone in our lives like that. How is it when we are in their company? How do we feel? What do we do when they are next to us? How do we behave? What do we say? What do we do? Even what do we think? If you feel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this person a great deal of ilm and maybe ilham, then even you watch what you think. Because you don't want them to feel the negative energy of evil thoughts from your qalb. So you watch yourself at every level. And the feeling you have, I have, when I'm in their company, you know what it's like. You know what it's like. Choose someone. There is someone. Allah probably in his rahmah gave everyone someone so they would know something of what it's like to be in the presence of an azim. And therefore, to make an analogy and a parallel of what it should be like to be in the presence of al azim subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, that is the state of Ihsan. And Ihsan is the goal of our deen. The goal of mine as a Muslim, as a mu'min, is to come to Allah Azza wa Jal with a qalb that is pure, that is clean, that is sound. The prayer of our father Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to disgrace him, and these, these days of Dhul Hijjah are the days of Ibrahim alayhi salam. When we must be thinking and reflecting and feeling the feelings and the life of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And drawing strength and inspiration and spirit from the various stages of his life that insha'Allah if we follow in his footsteps, we will have an Eid of our hearts, a true Eid of our hearts in these 10 days of mujahada and struggle and ibadah and dhikr and remembrance, these most blessed days to all, uh, to, to the, these most blessed days to Allah Azza wa Jal from all of the days of the year. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, what does he say? يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ on that day, no wealth will benefit and no power, no children will benefit except the one who comes to Allah Azza wa Jal with a sound heart, with a qalb that is salim, that is healthy, that is pure, that is clean, a qalb that is in tawheed, a qalb that is in ihsan. A qalb that is in ihsan. And that word salim is the same root as Islam. It means sound, at peace, safe, 
secure in happiness, in sa'ada. So this state of ihsan, my dear brothers and sisters, is what we, what we aim for and what we want. Now, if I am in a state of ihsan, if I am truly a khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I realize in me, at the level of my heart, of my, of my qalb, the most beautiful names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I am gentle, and I am kind, and I am knowledgeable, and I am patient, and I am forbearing, and I am generous, and I protect the trusts of those around me, and, and, and with every one of those most beautiful names. If I am like that, then I would only give Ihsan to others. Then I could only give Ihsan to others. And then my relationship with all of creation is going to be ultimately a relationship of Ihsan. And Ihsan is excellence, beauty, goodness. If I have forbearance in me and I am wronged, I forgive. If I have forbearance in me and someone severs relations from my family, I unite them. If I have ihsan in me and someone harms me or oppresses me and I'm able to forgive with some detail, I forgive. If someone is violent towards me in words, I'm patient. If someone is in need, I give. If someone requires knowledge, I dispense it. If someone wants to know how do I apply that knowledge, I apply it in the most beautiful way because Allah Azza wa Jal is Al-Hakim in the proper way, with the proper words, in the proper manner, in the proper dosage, in the proper prophetic methodology of his sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-wahid al-ahad. And so I have in my heart ultimately nothing but him. And everything I love and want is by him and through him and for him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now can you imagine a person like that? Can you? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam who reached the highest levels of ihsan beyond even Jibreel. And how do we know that? You know the proof of that. He went beyond the Sidratul Muntaha, the farthermost, the furthermost boundary when even Jibreel was not allowed to traverse of nearness, of purity, of safa, of beauty, of excellence, of spirituality, the likes of which have never seen and known, the likes of which will never know. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. That ihsan and how was he in his dealings? How was he in his words? How was he in his behavior? How was he in everything? So much so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran about him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa innaka, wa innaka la ala khulukin azim. Wa and inna emphasis. Ka you la emphasis. Ala emphasis, khulukin khuluk, character azim, emphasis with a name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-azim. You literally, you are over all that is beautiful of morals, of values, of ethics, of akhlaq. You are over it. Wa innaka la ala, ala is on. You are on, over, like what? Like one of our teachers says, Hafizahullah, as though you are the king 
of beautiful khuluq. You are sitting on a throne. You own it. It is yours. You are the sovereign master of beautiful khuluq. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. We don't have to speak about his rahmah. We don't have to speak about his rifq. We don't have to speak about his karam. If you read that, if I read that, I get a glimpse into what his qalb, his heart was like. And oftentimes it is unbelievable. You cannot fathom it. You cannot believe that such beauty could be humanly realizable. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Now, Islamic civilization, the beauty in Islamic civilization, the excellence in Islamic civilization, the spirituality in Islamic civilization. Where does it come from? Does it come from power? Does it come from, does it primarily, does it originate in power? Does it originate in might? Does it originate in military prowess? Does it originate in technological advancement? It does not. It does not. Those come later when he gives it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not that we should not strive for it, we should. But those, those variables, they are not and they were never what made our, Islam, our, our civilization and our legacy great. It was akhlaq that came from ihsan, that was the realization of ubudiyah to Allah, of loving submission to Allah Azza wa Jal, that is the realization of being a Khalifa. That is what made our civilization, our civilization, the values that it had. And when then it was given power, it used that power in accord and in harmony with those values. When it sought advancement in the arts or in the science or in any other field, it sought advancement on the basis of these akhlaq. And it used what it used for the benefit of humanity and the benefit of the human spirit. Because we are, remember what the poet said, we are by virtue of our ruh, not by our jasad in sand. And whatever we have of power in its different forms, in its different shades, in its different facets, that power, if it does not beautify my ruh, it is power that is useless. Not only that, it is power that is harmful. And therefore, interestingly enough, in Arabic, the word in civilization in Arabic is what? Tahaddur, hadara. Tahaddur, hadara. What are the roots of that? Hadara, hadara. And when our ulama speak about hadara, what comes to mind? Hudur. What is hudur? The presence of the heart with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They speak about istihdar, istihdar of the qalb, the presence of the qalb. And, and what is this other than ihsan? The presence of the heart with Allah azza wa jal, the awareness of the heart with Allah azza wa jal, the hudur of the qalb with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the essence of civilization properly understood. And that is the essence of our Islamic civilization. So I cannot be a mutahabbir, I cannot be civilized in any sense of the word without hudur of my heart with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once I have hudur of my heart with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then all of what we see externally in civilization is a natural result of that inner beauty to be organized, to spend resources wisely, to administrate properly, to administrate with justice, to look after those who don't have, to treat the environment beautifully. You see, this one, 
The environmentalist looks at the environment as a means to an end. A secular, envirom a, a secular environmentalist looks at the environment as a thing to be protected for the next generation. That's fine, and that's good, and that's true. But, but, is it only that? Is it only a means to an end? How do we look at it? وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَلَكِنْ لَا لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ Is that right? The Hufad, correct me. Yes, khairan. There's not a thing that doesn't praise him, glorify him, remember him, love him, want him. Not a thing in creation. All of it, plants, flowers, air, water, rain, dew, moisture, the rose, the bee, the hummingbird, the mosquito, the caterpillar. With that sense, how would my protection of the environment be? When everything around me is remembering him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. When everything is in dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Truly, the Muslim would be able to protect and would have a relationship with the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he is a Khalifa, because he seeks Ihsan, because she is a Khalifa, because she seeks Ihsan, because she's adorned, adorned herself with the khuluq of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, the relationship with the environment will be deeper, will be more profound, more beautiful, more sacred, and more beneficial. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us of those who listen and follow the best of what they of what they hear, what they heard. If anything was good, it was from Allah Azza wa Jal, and anything incorrect was from me and the impact of shaitan upon me. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. سام وخل الهموم وخل الغموم وخل الضجاج